And now it's time to focus on security. See, the thing is when you talk about software development, of course we build projects. And then in that process, basically we have to first learn the language, we have to learn the frameworks, and then we start implementing the project. The most important thing in a project when you build it is it should work. Of course, right, if your software is not working, then all the other aspect doesn't make any sense. So the first thing is focus on building a working product. Next is the project or the software should be stable. I mean, we build projects which works and then suddenly it stopped working for a few inputs and then uh, maybe because of some issues, it gives you other issues. Now that means your software is not stable and most of the application which I use on my phone are not stable, right? Uh, even it can be a banking application. I mean, the only thing which works perfectly, I think is calculator, right? Apart from that, you will see bugs in most of the softwares and it will be. No software in the world is 100% bug proof. And if you think that one of the software is bug proof, maybe we have not done enough hard work to find the bugs. But yeah, it will, it will have some bugs. We have to make sure that you reduce the number of bugs, at least the major bugs should not be there. And by doing that, you're making it stable. So in Java also, we can do that with the help of handling the exceptions and stuff. Then the most important thing which comes here is the security. And we know the importance of security, right? And that's why uh, on your phone as well, you implement the locks. Maybe it can be your fingerprint reader or your face unlock or using a pattern or a password. We do keep the password as 000 just to make it easy, but again, not a good idea. Uh, still, we know the importance of security. Now, whatever we have built this, till this point and whatever we have learned in the project which we have built is not secure because anyone can go there, anyone can do anything with the project. Uh, what if you want to make it secure, you'll be having multiple users. Not everyone should be able to do everything. Example, if you are building e-commerce, uh, we will be having different roles there. So someone, the seller will add the product, the buyer will buy the product, right? So everyone will have different role and they have to log in to achieve those roles. And uh, that's how you can basically, you can secure it. And that's not the only way you can secure it. There are multiple ways of securing it. But as a developer, we focus on uh, login logout or with the help of username, password, or maybe some other formats. So yeah, so how do we implement security? Now, if you're not using Spring, if you're using a normal uh, Savlet JSP to build web application, implementing security is a big task. I mean, trust me, if you spend 10 hours building a product, you will be spending another 20 hours securing it. But Spring security will make your work easy. How? We'll see that step by step. But then how do we know, how do we secure the application? What are the steps you have to follow? Sometimes we feel that it is secure and then some hacker will hack it by showing, hey, it's not secure, then you will secure it. It works in the normal applications, but think about banking application, think about uh, uh, healthcare records. Uh, so sometimes we are not sure how do we secure it. We don't want to wait for someone to hack and then tell us that's how I can hack your software or the application. Now to do this, uh, we have something called OWASP. Now OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. And what they do is every four years, they release some important security measures which you can take or some issues and then you can work on those issues and make sure that you don't have that in your project. And they call it as OWASP top 10. So if I click on this top 10 here, so you can see these are the top 10 risk of 2021. So they release this in every four years. So the next version or next update is expected to be coming into 2025. So depending upon when you're watching this, uh, so you can look at the recent uh, top 10. So this was 2017, this is 2021, and these are the measures, uh, these are the security risk. And you can just go through this, it talks about access control, cryptography, uh, how do you encrypt and how do you decrypt, which standards you're following, are you handling the injection attacks, uh, then designing, uh, is, it, is it your, the way you design your software, is it secure? Uh, there are a lot of things which are mentioned here. Uh, I would also, add a link of OWASP top 10 in the description. I already made a video on this, so you can have a watch. But make sure that you follow this to understand different security issues which we have. Okay, so the good thing is, if you, I mean, if you are not using Spring, then you have to think about all those things, you have to implement them step by step. Now, when you use a framework like Spring, which has its own 
a security implementation which is called Spring Security, it takes care of most of these things. And it by default it will say, hey, you're doing this, maybe it will not make your web secure, so do this. And it will give you suggestions as well. It will restrict you to do certain things. And if you follow that, you're basically making your application secure. And what I'm talking about, you will get to know that in some time. Uh, I mean, in the upcoming videos. So now let's try to build a project and let me show you how easy it is to secure your application using Spring Security. So to do that, what I will do is first of all, let's create a new project. Of course I can edit my existing project, but I want to show you how do you start a project thinking security in the mind. Okay, so let's go to our start.spring.io and here we'll create a Maven project with Java language. Uh, this is 3.3.1. The group ID is com.telisco. Uh, the artifact ID is Spring security example. Of course, you can use any name, doesn't matter. And the packaging will be JAR, the JAR version is 21. Now dependencies. Of course, you can secure different type of applications. Uh, example, if you are securing your hardware, let's say I have this uh, uh, phone with me and I want to secure this. Basically, I can just keep it in a room and I can lock the room so that no one can access it. That's external security. But what if someone can hack it online? So for that, we have to build Spring Security. So I'm basically trying to secure a web application using Spring Security. So I want to have a web feature. Uh, I will also get dev tool just in case if I want to use that. We can also use database. See, ultimately when you say login, username, login, password, you may want to store that in database. So of course we need to have database as well, but maybe we can add database part later. At this point, just try to keep it simple. Uh, so we got web and uh, dev tools. I will get now Spring Security. Now this will make your app secure. And I will click on generate. So it will download the project. Now the only thing we have to do is we have to unzip it and open that in the IntelliJ IDEA community version. So unzipping done, I will just open this project now. So this is a project, I will click on open and yeah, I got my project here. So basically I got Spring Security project and now uh, I want to test it if this is working. So what I will do is to start with, I will disable the Spring security part. So at this point, I will just say comment and reload the Maven changes, that's important. Now, when you, once you reload, you don't have Spring security in the project. So it is, it is normal Spring Boot application. And I will go to SRC. In the main, I will create a controller because at this point, we don't have any controllers. And if you want to secure, you need some resource to secure, right? So let's create a resource and I will say this as a simple hello controller, nothing fancy, a simple hello controller. And here, basically what I'm going to do is, uh, of course I have to make it controller and I'll make it rest controller. I don't want to create the UIs, I will simply go for the rest endpoints. And here, I just want one method and we have used this before, so I will simply say greet and this will basically uh, get mapping and the URL is homepage. So whenever someone requests for the homepage, I want to return, welcome to Telisco. That's it, nothing fancy, just a simple text. Okay, so for the homepage, this is the text I want to return. I want to check if this is working. So I will go back to my application and here I will click on run. This should run on port number 8080 if it is free and it should be free. So if I look at here, yeah, it is running on port number 8080. How do I verify this? I will open a browser. Okay, so I got my browser here and I'm going to hit localhost 8080 and you can see it says, welcome to Telisco. Now this is the resource I want to secure. Of course, this can be a very complex resource as well, something which interacts with the database or maybe it is doing some bigger task. It doesn't matter, right? Resource is a resource. Maybe you want to secure your uh, a simple pen or maybe you want to secure your uh, gold chain both are resources, you will need a locker to secure it. So how do we secure this? What I want to do is, uh, if someone requests for the homepage, it should first open the login form. Of course, right, there should be a login form. That means we have to create a UI for the login form, that's one. Next, when a user enters the details, the username and password, we have to verify that in the backend. How do I verify that? Maybe I need a database where I will have username and passwords. Lot of steps, right? Okay, let's do that in this video or maybe in the next video, let's see. Uh, okay, maybe you can judge by the length of the video how difficult it will be. So what I will do is I will just go back here uh, to the palm and I will enable this Spring Security because now I want to secure it. And just by enabling it, 
let's see if the system, if the application still works. I will just reload the project and let's see what errors you get so that you can focus on the building a login form and other stuff. Okay, so now I'm hitting the same URL, which is localhost 8080 if I enter. Oh, this is weird and awesome at the same time. Weird because I was expecting some error or maybe it should say something that you don't have a login form. And the awesome thing is Spring Security is giving you a login form just by adding that dependency. But the question is, is it just a login form or is it working? Okay, now that's tricky. First of all, I'm not sure what the username and password is. I'm just guessing. So maybe the username will be user. Actually, the username is user. But what about the password? Is it the user? Let's try. Sign in. No, it's not working. So you can see it says bad credentials. So it is checking something. I'm saying user, uh, password should be Naveen. No, it's not working. Maybe it's not even picking my local, uh, I mean, desktop name. So what will be the password and username? Username is user for sure. The password, where do, I, where do I find the password? Now, if you go to the console and if you, if you scroll up, can you see that? It says using generated security password is this. This is the password. I can simply copy this and go back here and paste it and voila. So just by adding a dependency, it is giving you a login form. It is also giving you the logic to check if the username and password is correct. And it is doing that, okay? Now, let me show you, it's actually working. If I open the another tab, another incognito tab here, or private window for Safari, and if I say localhost 8080, it is still asking for the login form. So it maintains the session as well. But if I open a normal tab, or let's a new tab, and if I hit the same URL, it is not asking for the login form. So session is also maintaining. So a lot of things is doing, doing behind the scene, right? This is cool. Now we got this, right? And this perfectly makes sense. But it also says something. It says this generated password is for development use only. Don't use it in the production. Okay, that's good. Also, we only got one password. In your system, you'll be having multiple users. How do I achieve that? How do we have multiple username and password? And now you might be thinking, there should be some magic where Spring Security will have all the username and password. No, Sp Spring Security is magic, but it's not actually a superhuman. Can I say that? Or in India, we say Rajnikant. I'm not sure how many of you know this uh, context, but yeah. So Spring Security has no idea what username and password you will be going to use. And that's why you have to use database. How we are going to do that, let's see in the upcoming videos, but we have to do a lot of work to secure it with the help of username and password. But the main thing what it has done is it is giving you a login form. It also gives you one more thing. What if you want to log out? So you can just use a URL here and say, log out, enter. It will say, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, log out, and then. If you're thinking this is just a UI gimmick, uh, no, let me just open this tab once again, and I will hit the localhost 8080. It is asking you to sign in again. So log out actually works. It's not just a gimmick where you see a UI which says log out done. It's actually protecting your application. So once you log in, once you log out, it's gone. Okay, and, uh, but yeah, there are a lot of things we have to talk about, and we're going to discuss that in the, upcoming videos. But at this point, we just added the dependency for Spring Security and it is giving you a login form. If you want to change something, if you want to change a password, you can do that in the resource. So in the application properties, you can set your username passwords here. But again, you can only set only one username password. Maybe you don't want to go for this password every time. So maybe a super root uh, password, you can set it here, username password. Uh, but the ideal way is to work with database. And how we're going to do that, let's see in the upcoming videos. So I hope you are enjoying this series uh, where you're talking about different concepts of Spring. And if you're enjoying it, let me know in the comments and also hit the like button, which will motivate me to make the videos faster. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.